you know when uh, when the organizers wanted me to talk about digital india to digital bharat uh, i i said you know actually digital Bha india was planned as digital bharat but like any everything it starts with the big cities and then then you know percolates down to india or uh, to real bharat and and that is uh, that is some of the things that we are learning while we are going in this whole uh, digitization of the bharat track i thought i'll share with you in this room i am very sure whatever i am sharing is redundant you should know all of this better than me but uh, you know uh, being the low, lowest common denominator i am just going to go and talk about a few phenomena that we are seeing backed with some data that is of interest to you uh, and again can i request ashish to close the door it's very disturbing if people keep walking in you can't concentrate on what you're saying so uh if you look at india and i sit in i i sit and work in delhi and i'll be look at india in a very different manner also we don't don't look at it only 1.4 billion indians we look at the households and this is the household uh, currently population as well as the income levels in the different layers of the pyramid and as you know uh, the the india that we talk is always the the 4 million the super rich or the rich in india the 44 million households which are called middle class but the bharat is right here the 190 million how do we know this is the bharat that is 190 million or approximately 200 million households this is the households for example that we sub provided subsidy and 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 support during covid this is an household that uh, this are the this is the india this is the bharat that um, that actually uh, looked up to the government to give them support at a time of the need and 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 this to so us for us this is the this is a very critical part to understand how this behaves and how is this behaving because this is where real india is this is 200 million families out of the 250 million odd families right that is 80% of india right there but just because they are aspirational which is the 90 million or so or the 100 million which is you know just below or just above the pow poverty line does not mean they are not consuming digital that's the that's the key thing we have learned and digital for them does not mean they have a smartphone they of course have a smartphone now that's given with the lowest data cost in the world right india everybody has a smartphone who desires to have one that's that's a given right you understand this yes no yes to what what is our average data cost it's it's you know uh, give or take about 10 rupees a gb a, a month so if you do unlimited data it can be anywhere from 99 rupees to 199 um, rupees unlimited data usage a month 1% of the income is what people have what we have said is the cost of data to their uh, income levels so if the average household income uh, in this category is 2500 dollars a year that's the per capita uh, they are not going to end up spending more than 25 dollars a year on their data connectivity and that's the that's one of the goals designs by the way which many of you probably don't uh, did not perceive it but that's that's been our design thinking uh, and that's partly because of the geo effect that you all know of and this is the market today that i call digital bharat but what is how is this market behaving is important even if you want to phantom this 834 million which is 84 crore internet users if you take the 84 crore internet users and put it as densely as pop, uh, possible in this 40 45 million people multiply that by half that still is only 200 million people 220 million people so where is the 600 other million people coming from it is coming from the layers that i am talking about and that layers which are and and two things have happened and i've said this post demonetization we've done lot of studies one thing is a fact today that 99.9% households have a bank account that at a household level we have 100% banking available financial inclusion biased right the whole algorithm should be unbiased sanjeev was uh, represents spice money if you ask him the assisted commerce market is uh, is not technically will never get counted as e-commerce but people are buying and selling through the csc points because that's a point of trust or the spice money points or any other points payment is happening by upi a lot of times but transaction is not happening on a digital front so uh, 
this segment is really yearning to buy things and doing things. This is the real aspirational class. Sitting in Delhi, we, we, I can, this is a big message I can tell you. We have to watch out for their behavior. The other thing that has happened in Digital Bharat, and this is from my experience in the last six months, the D, the, during COVID, a lot of migration happened reverse, right? A reverse migration happened to the villages. Lot of it. You saw the migrant crisis, right? And during the migrant crisis, a lot of people who are very digitally savvy moved to villages. They have all become village level entrepreneurs. They're opening small businesses there. They, 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 they were always, let's say, let's say if I was, you know, servicing an Uber uh, system, I was on an Uber Ola system in Delhi, and I've now today moved back to Jharkhand. I'm very digitally savvy. And that digitally savvy person is trying to do more and more transactions. And that's a big audience of about 50 million people, we estimate, who have become the local digital champions in these village communities. And they are coming there, some of them are becoming village level entrepreneurs, they're trying to experiment with new things. So this is where digital Bharat is moving. Uh, this is not getting recorded, right? Where is the organizer? Can, is this getting recorded? Oh, good, not bad, actually bad. I was gonna say something in uh, Vegas style rules, but I probably cannot. How many of you see a movie, Jamantara? Have you seen the movie Jamantara on Netflix? Where is Jamantara? Where? Actually, in the hardcore Jharkhand, Bengal, Naxal belt. Why is Jamantara famous? It has great mobile connectivity. It has got great smartphone connectivity. It has got zero police connectivity. Right? It's very difficult to reach there. What are, who are those people? I mean, let's call them entrepreneurs. Uh, they, they are new age entrepreneurs which are doing aggressive business from there. This is, this is what is happening in Bharat. New business models are getting developed. I, I was just trying to say that on a lighter side, so please don't get me wrong. Um, it's, a, it's a big worry for us because a lot of scams originate from there. But uh, the, the real transformation in the next two to three years is that this community is now going to buy a lot more than we can imagine. Second, from a three trillion economy, when we are moving to a five trillion economy, from a 2,500 average per capita, we are going to go to 3,500 to 3,800 per capita. The disposable income, the extra disposable income is getting spent towards education, a lot towards education. So, you know, if I am in EdTech, if I am looking at digital Bharat from a very different perspective, there is a lot of opportunity that is lying in that segment. And, and FinTechs serving that market from financing education, financing health, financing so many other things, travel, tourism, they're all taking pilgrimages. Uh, I was at Sangam yesterday, and you talk to some of these people, they are all from this category. So it's a, this, is, this is a new India, transacting, willing to transact, price levels different. I always say this segment, high volume business, low, no, no value, low value, but high, high, high volume. So that is what is happening to Bharat, digital Bharat, and um, they're transacting. Great example of a nudge. And I'll leave it there after uh, a few more things, and then we can have an open discussion. The great example is Mr. Gadkari and Fast Track. What did we do in making Fast Track available so fast throughout the country that today Fast Track is the default payment mechanism on the highways? What, why did we do it as a government? I, I think you can answer that. Why did we do it as a government? Leakage was huge. So the, all these tolls operate on a revenue share basis, right? All of them. I used to be on the board of a company called Larson and Tobro, and we built platforms, right? We built roads and everything. so. But operation is done by somebody else. And one of the key things always was the amount of pilferage the toll operators do because they have to share revenue, so they will never report it correctly. Whatever you said. But today, what did we do? What was the nudge we said? Seven lanes, or let's say there are eight lanes. Seven will be fast tag, eight will be non. So because we have to provision for cash. Which, which you know is also a mandatory thing from a civic society perspective, that we are excluding people, so we can't exclude people, so we have to include everybody. But the cash line is of course now 20 cars, and the fast tag line is zero cars, or one car. Today, I think the updated number is, if this was a startup, this was a startup, nobody can have a better hockey stick curve than this. Right from customer onboarding, five, three to five minutes, the guy is standing right there, just before the booth, if you don't have a fast tag, he or she will mostly, 
boys, girls just standing before the booth, they'll give you the tag, you cross it, and then you start using it. The fastest digital experience is tied to your one of your existing wallets or your banks or whatever, and if you don't, are not able to tie it, he will tie it to his thing, take cash from you and tie it to his wallet. And then say, filling clear, you keep filling from your own side. Biggest revolution. But who is doing it? 98% of this traffic is rural. Truck drivers, taxi drivers. It is not the top of the pyramid. Everybody understands Fastag is the only way to pay because that's the way you will save petrol time on the road. Biggest example, Richard Thaler of University of Chicago wants to understand nudge theory. He should come here and study this. And that's what has happened. So uh, it's a, I always say it's a great example. How many, uh, how many, um, and again, moving down the value pyramid is digital Bharat. How many new um, mutual fund accounts have we opened, the stock broking accounts? Does anybody know that number? Per month, how many we add? Two million a month. We have almost from, in the last three years, from 20 million uh, unique users uh, of DMAT accounts, mutual, uh, the DMAT accounts, we have 110 million right now. Two million a month is being added. All, and where it is coming from is this new segment, which is saving, which is trying to invest, and that's where the opportunity lies. So that's why I always say that, uh, that India is really becoming digital Bharat. Farmers are not behind, by the way. And I'm giving an example from the government. We have the largest e-mandi. While individual companies have their own e-mandi, the government of India has called e enam which is the National Agriculture Marketplace, Electronic National Agriculture Marketplace. It has, right now, about 20 million farmers, 20 million households, farmers who are on the, and India has about 120 million farming families. 20 million are already on electronic Monday, one sixth of that. So don't think this is the, and, and that's the last message I will leave with. Pensioners, 70 million pensioners who are actually availing of the e-pension, the Jeevan, Jeevan Life Certificate, the Jeevan Pranam, on, uh, on using Aadhaar uh, life certificate, the EKYC certificate. So, DBT I already talked about, and startups. This is a fact, you know, this is another very interesting fact. The Prime Minister mentioned this on January 16th, that 45% of recognized startups are coming from tier two and tier three cities. They're no longer coming from the Delhi, Mumbai's. Of course, when they become unicorns, they all spread, but, uh, but the, 45% of startups are now coming from tier two cities. And of course, women should be happy. 44% have at least one woman star, uh, uh, director as a startup. And you know these open data platforms we are building. All, all of this, we talked about ONDC, India Stack, Open, OSIN, and Account Aggregator, and the Health Platform. But what is really happening in India, uh, digital Bharat is something that we all need to learn. The biggest thing that is happening is if there is convenience and there is economy, economic benefit, means they are saving money. Two things, if there is convenience and, and they're saving money. If there is only convenience but no money saving, that consumption is not gonna happen. But if there is convenience and saving money, digital Bharat will consume. It's up to you to decide whether you can offer both of them to them from their local other option, the other alternative which is available to them. But they are ready, they are consuming, they have all the tools that we have always had in the cities in, in the India, but in the Bharat, every single tool that we believe that exists with us is now existing with them. So the real empowerment, real tools are with them. Uh, I'll leave it here. Uh, I, I still have four more minutes. So I had about 20 minutes, 15 minutes I have given this. Any questions, any thoughts, comments, please, uh, please, please feel free to answer. Ask, please. Sir, you are the professor. I am actually just. Please, please, please do it. Please, do. I am just joking. I am just joking. Fastag is a great system, and you know it solves the problem. But I, I recall, I I took my first tag, fast tag in 2015, and it's taken seven long years to really come out on its own. I come into its own, right? I've been always fighting at the, <laughs> it then never worked and all. So my only submission is, uh, whatever uh, 
these kind of systems, the pace of implementation should be faster. That's the only thing. Uh, you know, um, no, you are uh, you are uh, you are repeating or elucidating what our prime minister always says: speed, scale, size. Right? That is exactly what his thing is. There are certain moments that happen that things accelerate just crazy, right? And, and I think we have to wait for those moments. This is, our, this is a moment, Fast Act took two and a half years before uh, Mr. Gadkari came and made this good nudge or a negative disincentive for people not to take the non Fast Act lane and it worked and today it's gone, right? Everybody came, came together, the ecosystem came together, the feet on, uh, feet on street came together and it's all, all enabled, right? Uh, but your point is right. I mean, whether it comes to ONDC or now many other things, scale is the most important thing and scale bottom up, not top down. So digital Bharat is all about top, uh, bottom up, not top down. But good, thank you, sir. Hi. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. Shudipta Roy from ICCI Bank. So one uh, question on pricing of transactions, right? Now we took a decision to make transaction pricing free both on UPI as well as on rupee credit cards. Uh, but however, if we look at uh, markets which have adopted UPI later than us, like Brazil, they left pricing discovery to the market. And the pricing discovery in Brazil is now at 62 basis points per transaction on PIX. And PIX is actually, if you look at the statistic, mark to mark, PIX is outperforming UPI. Right? So, what is the thought process around pricing? A very important policy question. Very important policy question. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, his question is, less than 2,000, should we start charging the UPI payment, the P2, even the merchant to, uh, pay, uh, merchant to person P2M, payment. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. What, whatever those P2M payments are, should we start charging? I, I, I personally believe, I think India, I, I don't consider Brazil, uh, they, they have their own rights to do whatever their systems are. I think if you ask this question to the government or to NPCIL, they are kind of content with what they are making with the other transactions. So. I know this is a contentious issue with the banks and the and many other players, but uh, I think policy-wise we want to keep that lowest. Let me leave it there, uh, so that this this bandwagon that we are on does not get disrupted. Where the where the harmonisation of the price points will happen, I think we'll all have to sit together and work on that. Maybe we'll have to play around a little bit and see how we do it. Uh, for example. Uh, whether that's 25 bips or that's 50 bips or 30 bips and still makes sense for the consumer as well as for the merchant, we shouldn't, okay, again, uh, I know it's getting recorded, we shouldn't be another rent-seeking thing that first started free and then started charging arm and a leg. So we have to be very cautious from a policy hat uh, when we do that. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes, please. Hello. Yeah, you, we can hear you. Hi, Karthik from Multiple. Uh, so you mentioned that data costs, extremely low data costs were one of the key enablers. But if the data costs rise, so now we are seeing in the results of the listed companies, they are rising. So would, I mean, once these, this cohort has tasted the blood, what's your opinion? Would they cut some other costs, but this becomes a good, necessity? Good question, Karthik. 1% is the criteria. I said that. So if their income levels are going up, they would, they would, they would be okay. If it is implement levels are not uh, commensurate with the cost, then I think they will make some cuts. With other some spend, this has become essential. It's air, wind, and water, and network now, right? Thank you. But remember, it's 2,500 also going to 4,000. We won't become 5 trillion without it becoming 3,700. So uh, per capita. So with, with per capita, you have a little bit of scope. Um, and then the telecom companies have to invest in their 5G, hopefully 6G network. So that is, I mean, I think we have to balance again, but I think that's where it will go. A little bit up, upside, I can see the te telecom tariffs going up. But still, we are the lowest data market in the world. And please, my friend Motana is in the other room. You ask him, how much you pay in Jordan? Which, which is probably, what, 12,000, 15,000? What is Jordan's uh, per capita? Can you search what is Jordan's per capita? They are not 1%. Even if they are 5x per capita, their costs are at least 20x of India. What 
what, whatever that is, we'll discuss offline, but that's, that's my gut feeling. Any, any other comments, questions, please, suggestions? What is it, Ankit? 10,000. So they're about 4x today. But their data cost is at least 5 to 10x of India. At least. So. Anything else? Otherwise, thank you very much. Thank you for having me.